My mate Kenton has done some extraordinary things in his life and he's pretty hilarious as well. We're going to talk about climbing, we're going to talk about sports, hot topics, and we're going to merge all that together for an entertaining 30 minutes. Oh, hey, so we are live again. Live again! Base Camp Theatre. Kenton, another week's gone in isolation. You should be on Everest. Yeah, so you're absolutely right. I, I should have flown out to Nepal on Sunday. But, you know, hey, this sort of stuff happens. There's always some bonus. So where I go running every day, I am watching the bluebells grow. I've not seen that before because I'm never here. So small things. Yeah, you know, you've got to be thankful right. for the small things. And, absolutely beautiful, uh, from, from my perspective, uh, just you telling me about the bluebells is bringing joy into my life. So thank you. Well, the daffodils are growing as well. That's something you should but be... But they're on the uh, way out now, aren't they, the daffodils? No, no, ours are just blooming. Oh, they're just blooming now? Yeah, well, I think we've got narcissi, slightly different. Like a small daffodil. You are quite the floral... Well, I sometimes go cycling with Chris Beardshaw. Oh, that's true. Yeah. The BBC gardening expert, yeah. Chris Beardshaw. Yeah. So that's yeah, that's another one. <laughs> um, so, yeah, a, a very, very special episode of Cool Conversation. Yeah, I'm pretty pumped by this. Yeah. Uh, assuming the technology works. Yeah, we've got to Slightly see nervous. whether we can um, use some sort of technology to get uh, the wonderful Nims Dai. And the name Dai interests me. Uh, uh, Is oh he God, Welsh? Here we go. No, he's not Welsh. He sounds Welsh. It, uh, okay, well, the Dai might be Welsh. But yeah, he's, he's about as state. far away from being Welsh as I am being Irish. What does that mean? He's a f as far away from being Welsh. Well, he's definitely not Welsh. Okay. He's not Welsh. <laughs> but yeah, this should be pretty interesting. So this is the first time, as you know, that we've had a special guest on. Um, and we'll see how it goes. I mean, the feedback last week was people were getting bored of us already. Yeah. They're bored of you of already. It. So it's, it's maybe me interviewing well, them. I don't know. I'm the, we'll I'm the we'll see professional how it goes. entertainer. So, you know. It's unlikely. There's not what the crew here say. Well, I, I'm not, you know, a retired entertainer. Anyway. Yeah. Retired entertainer. But we do have Nims Dai coming on the show with us tonight. Nims, listen, great to have you with us here this evening at the Barn Theatre on Cool Conversations. How are you, buddy? I'm good, thank you. And how are you? We're, we're Hello, fab. Nims. There he is. The yeah, legendary mate. Nims. So, <laughs> Nims, first question. How are you feeling after the Nepalese New Year, which was, what, two days ago? Yeah, I'm still good, you know, obviously with this all whole of a lockdown, um, you know, I'm having off day every day, so yeah, it's been all right. <laughs> and, and, and how did the Nepalese celebrate New Year? So it's 2077? Yeah, you're absolutely right. So we are obviously ahead of the time, mate, <laughs> so <laughs> I can see what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> So what's going to happen with uh, lockdown then? If you can see into the future, yeah, I what's going to happen? Into the future, mate. I think it's not going to end till next year. <laughs> oh, no, don't say that. No, no, don't, 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 don't upset all the viewers. So, listen, I've got a question for you. We're both meant to be right now at Everest, but obviously the situation that we're in, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're both in the UK now. What's it like being in the UK when you know that you're meant to be at home in, in Nepal and, and doing what you love? Yeah, if I'm completely honest, mate, I think this, it's a bit of, you know, boring, I guess. Um, obviously, you know, people like you and me, you know, we are massive, you know, fan of outdoors and that's the reason why why we do what we love doing. Uh, basically, that is either being in the mountains or in the outdoors. Uh, but the situation is it is what it is um so i'm just like you know doing fees you know two times a day and focusing on the book um and i think whoa whoa whoa, whoa. focus on the book <laughs> just take a step back there buddy focusing on the book tell me about the book so um, obviously you know um i thought it may be top secret top secret mate but i don't know well, i'm gonna say anyway people are gonna know anyway so i think the book is you know so, supposed to be out due in, in kind of you know, towards the end of this year. Um, I think I should not say the date. I, <laughs> public is going to kill me. <laughs> anyway, look, the book is... Uh, yeah, yeah, come on, you're NIMS. They're not going to kill NIMS. <laughs> you're like special um, forces. <laughs> yeah. But you know what, Kenton? What I'm really <clears throat> pleased about uh, with all this stuff is if this thing doesn't had happen, um, I would be on the mountains and there was only certain time allocated for the book and stuff which probably, probably wouldn't be at its 100%. 
Um, but obviously now I'm really taking some time. You know, obviously I'm I'm trying to you know like mesmerize and and kind of you know, referring to the videos, so people kind of you know, feel um, as they are actually on the mountains with me as they read the book. So it's been a bit of you know like uh, uh, a positive um, aspect on on my side in in that area. To be honest, yeah, you try and be positive in a in a in a bad situation. I love it. So just 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 tell me. You were in Nepal not so long ago. I think you went to visit your mum or saw something on social media. Yeah. What, 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 how is it? I mean, I love Nepal. I know you do. What is the situation over there? How, how is it? Because it's meant to be yeah. the big push this year, the tourism, you know, 2020, and it's all obviously gone a bit, you know, a bit south. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the biggest thing, obviously, you know, as you know, that, you know, the, the whole country, you know, is, most of its uh, income is from the tourism. Um, and uh, and I think with everything getting cancelled, it has obviously had a, had a huge impact uh, for those people whose livelihood depend upon it. You know, so the climbing community, you know, and, and I think the biggest effect is for those you know who basically work, uh, you know, you know, just a day to put the food on on the night. So basically, you know, for the porters, I think well, you know, rather than the, those you know you know uh, expedition owner and stuff. So I feel massively for those, you know, like porters and then those kind of, you know, like, you know, hard labor workers uh, in the industry. And, and, and I'm right in thinking, I mean, I saw it on your social media the other day. You've got, uh, in conjunction with your company, uh, Elite Himalayan Adventures, you've got a fundraiser on the go, haven't you? We can put the, we can put the details in the notes, but, but yeah. just, just, just give us a, a quick rundown on that. So basically, you know, uh, the idea, you know, kind of you know, came from like those guys who were actually in Nepal, uh, like Migma David Serpa, you know, and a few other people. And what they said to me is like, names, uh, you know, basically, you know, you know, for the poor, uh, you know, the, it's quite difficult because of the whole season uh, and all. Is there anything that you can do? Uh, and they did, made the request uh, to me, uh, to be honest. And uh, I said, OK, you know, if I can do something to help. I will definitely help. So I'm just uh, I just have a, a crowdfunding phase, and you know every money we raise from that will go to those who who needs absolute you know essential or who are in, in need of those you know aid. So yeah, and I hope you know soon the bigger organisation of the government will step in so you know we can just go that way. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's it's worth note. I mean Nepal. I don't know if you know this, young. I mean Nepal is the poorest nation in Southeast Asia. I mean it's it's a it's a country that's full of beautiful people, generous of heart. And you know, once yeah. again, I mean what twenty fifteen it gets slammed with the earthquake. This year was a big tourist yeah. drive. Tourism yeah. is such this a big shut, part of the, the industry. Down, so. And it, it's been shut down again. So Absolutely. Nims, it was interesting to see Wait, I can uh, see your kid there, right? Kenton's kid over there. Anything I can steal? And then you, yeah, you want to steal my kit? Come on! Look at, look at the whole. Look at this. Hey, well, this is uh, Nims. We're calling this base camp here, right here. Yeah. And Kenton needed oh. something to come that he that felt like home to him, and I think he feels more at home yeah. in Nepal than he does. I, I, I tell you what, I mean, I got my eyes on you. I mean, next time I see you in the hills, if, if any of my kit goes missing, <laughs> I, I know I, I know where to look. Hey, I'll, I'll hunt you yes, down, fella. Your kit anyway. It's all sponsor kit, so don't worry about it. No, please. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I still understand the the, the importance of materialistic <laughs> things. You know, I, even if, if it, even if it's sponsored, I don't abuse the kit. So he, he wanted to just get yeah. his toys out of the box to play with while yeah. he's in isolation. Yeah. So, okay, so, I mean, I've been meaning to ask this for a while. I mean, I, um, I, mean, I consider us not super close buddies, but I, I, I've got to tell the audience yeah. this. Yeah, okay, I've got to tell the audience okay. this. I love this story. <laughs> this, this, is, this is what a nice guy Nims is. It's about a year ago, well, more than a year ago, I contact Nims on social media because I was looking at going to Makalu. And I was interested to see if you were going back to Makalu. So Makalu's yeah. fifth highest mountain in the world, beautiful looking mountain. And Nims goes, yeah, yeah, I'm thinking about going and blah, blah, blah. But I'm down in Argentina right now. I'm like, oh, wow, that's fantastic. Bring me back a bottle of a Malbec, you know, the wine. <laughs> now, we hadn't met at this stage. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then about three weeks later, I get a, I get a message from Nims. And he's like, what's your address, mate? I'm like, well, what do you want my address? And this beautiful <laughs> bottle of Malbec turns up there we go. Uh, at home. And I think that really sums up for me the Nepalese spirit of generosity. So, um, yeah, hey, 
I salute you for that one. Thank, thanks a lot for that. That <laughs> was. Did, have you drank it? Is it good? Yeah, I drank it almost a day. Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. good. It was. It was did, a did good. You just pop the cork, put a straw in it. And yeah, pretty it much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we got it done that one. It sounds like Nepalese New Year. Yeah, we are. Pretty... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, going back into that again. <laughs> so, so, yeah, a, a big question for you. So I, I was always really curious. Project Possible, I think a lot of people know what it is. Uh, if people don't, it was NIMS's project to climb all 14 8,000-meter peaks in, well, it was less than a calendar year. It was less than seven months, which was just off the charts in terms of enjoyment. Yeah, I saw something about it. The, the previous record was eight years. Yeah. Some, yeah, That's, I mean, it was it, ridiculous. You, you crushed your, your superhuman nims. But I, I want to nah. know, you know, where did the vision come from? I mean, what, what, what was the catalyst that... So, you know, like, Kenton, as you know, like, you know, most of us, you know, when we, you know, when we start in a high altitude mountain, we never thought of climbing, you know, multiple mountains in a season. And even when I started first, um, I never thought that I could physically do that. Because, you know, I started climbing the Olagri first, you know, I, you know, obviously without any prior acclimatization, I could, um, I did the whole back to back in 14 days, but that wasn't enough for me to like, you know, think. So it wasn't even in my imagination. So 2017, I was an Everest. I was one of the, obviously, you know, instructor for the Gurkhas. Uh, I think, Kenton, you were there. I don't know, 2017. Yeah, uh, I, I, you, I'm sure you bring that up to deliver because that was the only year I've been with a non-summit. And then you okay. crushed it about five <laughs> days later. Now, I remember that. Hey, you've you you've brought that up deliberately, haven't you? Hey, you did ask <laughs> about the British dog. This is the British dog now. <laughs> oh, man, love you, love you. So, so basically what happened was, you know, because of the weather conditions, that the fixing line obviously didn't went to the summit. So being as an instructor for the Gurkhas, there was two things which I thought. One was, whenever as a Gurkha would get in a second chance to climb Everest using British taxpayers' money. And I thought that was no. And the second one was, you know, when you say you are a Gurkha and you are from Nepal, obviously, people think Everest is in your back garden, even though it's not, you know. So I felt like there was a huge reputation on Rick. So I step up to team up with, obviously, uh, our team Sherpas and a few other, other Sherpas. And I led the fixing team uh, to the summit, which was successful. Uh, immediately after that, Kenton, I came to Kathmandu, and I'm not going to lie here. Uh, obviously, I have been told it's going to be a kind of in a chill conversation. So I parted in Kathmandu for a week. Uh, then I went back to Everest again. Then I climbed Everest, Lhotse, and Makalu in in five days. Uh, and have in, in that five days, I stopped at Namche for two days to party. So that could have been done in three days. And when I finished Manaslu on day five, I submitted in, in the morning, about nine o'clock in the morning. and I was directly into base camp and we were expecting a heli pickup at the base camp. But because of the weather, the heli didn't come up and I just had to run the whole of, you know, like from Makalu base camp to Noom, which is, you know, really in a tough kind of terrain to run. And I still completed that, uh, that whole thing in 18 hours and I was still okay. So at that point, I thought I could do more. Well, I mean, d d d d I mean you're so <laughs> modest on this. Just to try to put that into some context, for those who are watching, most people that perhaps would just climb Everest would be destroyed afterwards. So, you know, only they would come home and they will have a deep sort of lethargy. It's a bit like pe when people run a marathon, they're, they're crushed afterwards. So Nims, he climbs Everest, then Lhotse, which is a neighboring mountain. Then he goes down and parties. And then he heads yeah. across to, to Makalu, which is, you know, we mentioned it earlier, this beautiful yeah. mountain first climbed by the French. Um, and you, you can't, and then you essentially run 18, was that 18 hours? 18 hours. Back down to, to the, to is, that, is that the roadhead? But yeah, so basically, well, yeah, to the roadhead. And then what happened was um, from there, um, I got a pickup by 4 by 4 to catch my flight, uh, last flight, which uh, we were aiming for. And as we just parked at the, <laughs> at the airport, the last plane took off. Oh. And we were like, what? But it made long story short, I had a really good friend from uh, from uh, from Harry Ford, um, and he just managed to send me a, a charter full of plane with a, with, a, with a beer and you know himself. So it was good. Okay, so <laughs> you keep mentioning partying <laughs> and beer. So 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 what? I, I I love beer as well. I'm a big big fan of beer. So most people that go to Nepal, there's the Everest beer, isn't there? And then there's a Gurkha yeah. beer. Uh, so, yeah. so 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 which is your favourite, Everest or Gurkha? <laughs> 
Both, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I love yes, that. Nims. I love Enough that. So, uh, so I've got a question for you, which people perhaps don't realise. Um, and I think I'm right on this. You're not actually Sherpa as such, are you? No, I'm not, mate. So, 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 so where, where, whereabouts in Nepal are you from? So I, I was born in the western part of Nepal, around uh, Sudana. Sudana is around the Olaygur region. Yeah. Um, so it's about 1,600 meter elevation. Uh, but I grew up in, in Chituan. So when I was a- around the age of uh, six, uh, we moved to Chituan, uh, which obviously in you know, the probably know that it's the most flattest and warm part of the country. Um, but that's where I grew up. So, yeah. So, 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 so where did you draw? I mean, you're, you're clearly an animal at, at altitude. So just, just you know, watching you last year, you climb K2, you essentially open up the route on K2, you come down, and then you virtually skip up broad peak afterwards yeah. if you're yeah. not you know if you're not somebody from the mountain areas as such you live down in chip i mean what did you do grow up wrestling tigers down there i mean yeah, where, where, where did your power like, come from <laughs> knock them a couple of you know yeah. a couple of them when i was a kid <laughs> no, i think um Kenton, obviously you know i started my first climbing in 2002 up in december and that's purely i just wanted to see the everest because i have never seen everest and a lot of people used to ask me, you know, when I'm from Nepal, that have you seen Everest? So the answer used to be always no, no, no. So obviously I decided to go and it kind of started really from there. So until 2018, I used to climb, you know, during my, you know, leave between, you know, going into operations or when I get, you know, a bit of Christmas in a leave, I used to go and climb. So I used to always climb on those leave. Uh, it was only, you know, last year when obviously I, I left the service uh, for the project. Uh, but yeah, I, mean, I don't know. I think if I'm being completely honest, I do have some sort of a physical aspect, which I believe. Um, but then, you know, obviously, uh, uh, backed up by that with the special forces training and, and the ability to make the decision and all. Um, and I think it kind of you know, brings as, as a whole package. Um, and, and to be honest, Kenton, you know, I, I'm very proud to say that, you know, I have done 20 expeditions over a thousand meter peak. And all of them have been successful, not only in terms of reaching the summit, but also bring everybody back home exactly the way they have left. So, yeah, I think it's, it's a sum of, you know, you know, a bit of, you know, being able to perform in this stressful environment, which I kind of learned from the special forces and, and the body kind of you know, adapts a lot quicker uh, than I would say normal human beings over there as well. And, and the whole mix max of everything, I think, mate. <laughs> And Nims, um, do you think that is a, a mindset thing that's trained over a long time? Is it a physical thing that's allowed you to get to these these amazing achievements, or is it a combination of everything? And I know, you know, your background in the yeah. special forces, it's as much up here as it is here. Yeah, well. I think I think you you need to be both. You know, so basically, when you go into this kind of you know huge fit, you know, you don't really supposed to be thinking about your fitness. The fit, fitness should be in your pocket. You know. So you, you pull it out whenever you need it. And that's what we say whenever we go for the UKSF selection, like like when I went, you know, they used to say the fees has to be on the bag. So basically you pull it out whenever you want. But then the biggest thing here is, you know, um, I have also climbed with a lot of you know, friends from Special Forces and all, but uh, obviously they can't climb at the same same rate and all. Uh, but here, I think uh, to sum up your answer, mate, it's, um, it's, it's also a mind game. Um, and... I'm gonna tell you, mate. Sometimes the the painful of going through or climbing in that, those environment is so big, it's so pain that you know you would you would easily you know accept death because you know that would probably put everything in the end. But you know you believe, you know, I'm one of those individuals who doesn't believe in that. You know, the, the death you know brings the solutions to whatever the pain you are having in life. So yeah, I think that's the that's the one of the Instagram posts that I made it today, which um which I happened to think a lot when I was on the mountains, and specifically when when the pain is so unbearable uh, and you still have to focus. And and for me, I'm going through that pain and, and agony, but I used to think like, well, the mission is, you know, is, is I think what I biggest thing what I used to think at that point is, yes, I'm having a pain and all, but I'm focusing on the pain, but I'm not focusing on, on you know, getting to the summit and being back. I'm not focusing on, to making this project successful. Mm. So and I always try to supersede that the, the, the thoughts of pain by some other thing else, and you know, that could be anything else. Uh, 
I, I, so, I read yeah. an interesting quote, Nims, uh, I think it was in the New York Times or something, that said when you were uh, on the way up to K2 <coughs> last year, that it was the first time that you'd ever doubted your ability to achieve something. So yeah. Talk me through that. <laughs> so, yeah, mate, that's, you know, normally, you know, I'm, you know, you know me, and I think the biggest thing is I'm, I'm really good at hiding the, the pain, I think, and, and, and stuff, and that's who I have always been, in, and I think my wife, she doesn't know anything about and you know, how I, I went through special forces and all and but that's that's like my nature. But like whereas my brother in law when he did his all arms commander course, he comes and tells everything like if everyone is like in you know, a part of that thing. But that's my downfall. I think but okay, K two. So I kind of you know take every mountain as, as a, like one mountain, not in terms of like technical climbing, but my preparation. I always go one hundred percent ready. Um, and K2 was kind of you know, no different, but when I look at the videos from a couple of the Serpas, um, it kind of, you know, gave me a doubt because I was scared. You know, I look at those videos and it was like huge, you know, snow deep conditions. And then the guys were like, you know, taken away by the avalanches. Um, and also like, you know, I spoke to one of the guys who had set fixed lines on K2 two times. And he's like, Nims, you know, there's no way you can go through that, though, you know, this one. And he was showing me on, on, on the video, uh, video he had that if you try to go on the right, you know, obviously that's like in a bottleneck and there's a Syrac as well. And he said, if you try to click with your eye stacks over there and it hits the wrong angle, you probably bring the whole Syrac down and all. And I was like, and that's when I kind of, you know, doubted my, my ability. And also, my, to be honest, with my old team members, because I wanted to give them an opportunity. So... Every team members were put in, in the mountains which they haven't climbed before. So I kind of realized that was a bad call on K2 because, you know, Mi'kmaq David Serpa is like my right hand man. He's an amazing climber and um, he wasn't on the team. Oh, no. So I remember that night and I said, Mi'kmaq, you know, what's, you, know, you, know, you must know, you know, there must be a way and all. And he's like, no, nah, I think you should be fine, Nims. And I was like, and he was sleeping so well, but I didn't sleep well that, that night. You know, I can say that. And I'm like, you know, and I was like, I wish I had changed the, you know, changed the like, you know, orbit of, of the team members. But then there was just that's, that's one thing here, mate. But the second thing was I pulled all my teams back again on to K2 Base Camp because two of my, um, you know, team members were already leaving G1, G2 Base Camp because, you know, that's their job done. But I had to pull them all back in after I watched that video because I was thinking in my mind, I'm going to try at least six times before before I give up. So I was going to change the team and all. Uh, but the basic line went into like, you know, when when I you know we go for this special forces selection. Um, okay, when we got, I got five minutes called, done. When, when we go for this special forces selection, you know, there will be 200, you know, best of the guys in, 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 in the Triforce service. And sometimes, you know, only, you know, six people make it. So if you listen to those 194 people who have failed, you're never going to try. Um, so I just put that into a basic kind of you know, things that for me, I'm going to go see the things by myself, assess the thing by myself and, and do it. So it was that. So I, I've got, we've only got a few minutes left, Nims. Uh, I, I could talk <laughs> to you all day long. I've got two questions for you. First Send one it. is, you know, the Sherpa crew that I work with, they seem to live on super hot chilies, Kusani. Now, yeah. I've seen you in Argentina earlier this year and you were chomping down chili. <laughs> is that your secret weapon? Is, is that how you get up these mountains? You are Kusani powered. That's it, isn't it? Yeah, guys, you know, try it, you know? So, okay, so I am going to try that one. And the other thing which I've got to ask you, and this is a, if I put pictures of myself up behind me, like you've got in your living room there, <laughs> I can see two pictures of yourself. Yeah. Okay, if I yeah. do that, do I become as strong as you? Oh, mate, you are already stronger than me, so don't worry. You don't have to do that. Listen, Nims, um, there's so much I want to ask you. Um, I mean, we, we haven't got enough time to go through it all. I want to ask you about Everest last year, that famous picture. We're going to have to have you back on. Um, but for now, I, from, from the middle of my heart, I want to wish you a happy new year. I, was, I want to wish you all the best. And I really hope that I get to hang out with you this autumn on Everest. So, brother, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Thanks, Nims. <laughs> Thank you, Nims. Speak to you soon, bud. We'll speak to you soon. Bye. Cheers. Fantastic. What a legend that boy that is. That guy is a legend. And he's, he's, a given, he's, he's given, us, given us up his time today. 
Um, so, yeah, just, just a quick thing. Obviously, we just had one legend on, and um, I don't know if you heard the news, Ewan, but some... Yeah, I, I saw on social media today. That yeah, some means. sad news that another legend, mm -hmm. uh, a legend of British, in fact, global climbing, passed away late last night, uh, Joe Brown. And um, Joe Brown, an amazing climber, spanned many, many decades, uh, known as like the, the sort of Manchester Spider, the Spider-Man, first ascent of Kanchenjunga, the 8,000 meter peak in 1955 with George Brand. Big inspiration on my, uh, on my own climbing with some of his rock roots. And uh, as I say, he passed away last night, aged 89 years old. So you know, certainly from us here at the Barn Theatre, just want to say to the family and friends, you know, our thoughts are with you. He will leave a legacy that will go on for many, many decades, you know, long after um, you know, we're not here probably. His roots speak for themselves. His bold approach to life in general, quite the inspiration. I'm sure so many people in the climbing community will be sharing those thoughts on a, what is a difficult day for them today with that news. Um, but it's amazing for us to look at somebody like Nims, who is sort of the future of climbing, and to look back at the legend that was Joe. And that is a perfect way to end this third, third episode? Third episode, of yeah. Cool conversations. Yeah, yeah we're still here. Yeah, yeah. Until we get kicked off, we're going to keep coming back, guys. So, so, same place. Same time. Next week. And we look to see each and every one of you. And we're going to be getting it done with Kenton. Thanks for joining us. Cool. Cool conversations next week right here. Looking forward to it. Basecamp Barn. Peace. At the end of this little production, you will find a donate button. I implore each and every one of you. I don't care if it's 10p, 10 pounds, 100 pounds. Look behind the back of the sofa. But please, this is a local facility. It's not supported by the Arts Council and things like that. You and the team have done an amazing job. So come on. This is what this is about. This is what Cool Conversations is about. It's about helping support the local community. So dig deep, please. In March 2018, we opened our doors to the public with a vision not just to create challenging professional theatre, but to use this as a platform to inspire and bring communities together. Theatre and culture build identity. With theatre and culture in our local life, the community landscape is more vibrant. Local life is enriched. We believe that the benefits of theatre should be available for everyone. Our Theatre for All programme has removed financial barriers giving disadvantaged people access to the theatre free of charge. So we were told that we'd come here and have a Christmas meal and then go and watch A Christmas Carol. Our aim is to make live professional theatre available to everyone and use that experience for positive change. Theatre can be transformational in young lives. Our academy is now in its fourth year and we continue to build on our vision of bringing the best performing arts tuition to the heart of the Cotswolds. We work hard to make our academy as inclusive and as accessible as possible. Discounts apply for parents with more than one child. Our bursaries help support talented children from less affluent backgrounds. The academy creates a fun and challenging environment where children can build friendships and develop key skills not just for theatre, but for life. We are also able to provide real opportunities for students who wish to pursue careers in the arts. My name is Harry Apps. I am currently playing Marius in Les Miserables in the West End. Barn outreach and learning programmes engage with thousands of people. Our free workshops support the drama curriculum in local schools. 
Singing and musical theatre workshops in community groups and care homes have helped address issues of isolation. Our Song for Sirencester project in aid of mental health charities brought our community together in an unprecedented way. We've collaborated with many charities in the region, including the Churn Project, to support individuals dealing with the barriers to finding work. Since working you on, my life's changed. It's given me some purpose, given me an interest, some confidence I was lacking prior to all this. The Barn Theatre played a pivotal role in the town's 2018 World War I centenary celebrations. Who could forget our record-breaking human poppy? Our live streaming work on the annual Advent Festival helped thousands engage and take part in Sirencester's Christmas festivities. In these times of uncertainty, we strive to keep the community together. The theatre may be temporarily closed, but our commitment to you goes on. Even now, our amazing costume department are helping the NHS by making scrubs for frontline workers. We've used our technology to build a free live streaming service that provides much needed community news and entertainment for all the family. Broadcasting every day to keep us all connected. We are not just a theatre. We are the bar.